guys, today I'm doing a video on why and how you get scammed by fake immigration agencies. It's super topical. People speak to me all the time and many of you who are talking to me have already been scammed out of 15, 20,000 Rand. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. This video today is going to give you all the details on how to check whether the immigration agency you're using is legitimate and how to go about not being scammed. Thanks so much for joining me, Robbie. It's so great. Robbie is from NWI, New World Immigration, and I'm so excited that we can speak to each other. Robbie's in Cape Town. I'm sitting here in Ontario, in Canada. Robbie, it's wonderful to meet you and always just to spend time with you. I really am really grateful to speak about scamming and these fake immigration agencies. Tell me a little bit about NWI, first of all. Well, firstly, I want to just like say I'm I'm super happy that you've um, address this topic because on a daily basis we've got to deal with uh, a lot of people that are calling into our company and expressing heartache because they've paid money over to someone out there and they can't get hold of them and it's just a nightmare. How can somebody check if they are being scammed or not? What do you need to do? Sometimes when things are too good to be true they normally are not true. So there are many things that you can do to make sure that you're dealing with the right credible people. Okay. Uh, naturally, the first thing that I would do is I would try and understand whether the company that you're speaking to exists, first of all, okay. and whether okay. or not they are registered in the country that they're operating from. So if it's a Canadian uh, immigration company, yeah. you want to make yeah. sure that they've got a registration number to operate as a business and also an immigration firm. So naturally, individuals in that firm or in that agency will be registered with the RCIC and ultimately have the right credential to be able to assist you in your uh, application. There are quite a few things that you can do. A nice thing to do is to go local. So that, for example, in South Africa, you have the Consumer Protection Act on your side. So if anything mm. goes wrong, Mm. You can file a complaint with the appropriate authorities to address that particular matter and okay. hold the company accountable if, if something does happen. If I want to find that registration number, so I'm working with somebody that I Googled, I found New World Immigration or some other immigration agency, where do I find that registration number? Do I, can I call them for it? It's usually on their website, perhaps. So you can actually go to Canada.ca. Um, okay. There's a section there where you can check the legitimacy of the consultant that you're working with. Okay. And you just jump onto the site and you either can put in the company uh, name. Mm -hmm. So the consultant that is registered is linked with that company. Oh. So if you put the company name, then the consultant's details will appear. You can also put the consultant's details, which will then display the company information. Okay. And to that point, I think it's important for the viewers to know that um, there's a difference. You cannot register a company, correct, as an immigration company or immigration certification. It's the individual or the consultant that you're dealing with at the company that has the qualification, correct? Correct, 100%. So the individual that is employed at the company, perhaps it's a director or just an employee, they mm -hmm. would need to go through the necessary training, write the exams, and ultimately get registered so that they can practice legally. Let's jump back into um, the different ways people are getting scammed and how we can prevent or how we can look for all of that. What, what, what else happens when people are being scammed? I mean, I know people have contacted me and they say, well, they've sp spoken to a company. I don't know if they checked if they were registered or not. Maybe they don't know. Then they've already lost 15 to 20,000 Rand and they just can't get hold of them anymore. Why is this happening? What's happening is prospective applicants are mm. responding to adverts that are displayed on Facebook and Google, oh, and you see them yes. all around the internet. So these companies, mm. these fake companies, yes. are technically allowed to advertise, or well, not allowed, but they do end up advertising everywhere. And very vulnerable people will respond to those advertisements, fill out inquiries, leave their details there. And the next thing a consultant is, uh, consultant is phoning them mm -hmm. and having a conversation about whether or not they qualify for, for Canada. 
more yeah. often than yeah. not, a lot of the scamsters will just go 100% you qualify no matter what your application looks like. Whoops. And because some people are so vulnerable and they want this thing to happen, they do fall into the trap of just trusting what this person's saying. Now, remember, these scamsters are complete. They do this day in, day out. They know exactly what they're doing. They are very good salespeople in a, in a way. And yeah. they will pester you until they can get a credit card number out of you. And ultimately, once you've done that, once you've given your, your credit card number or made a transfer, it's often very difficult to get hold of them again. They, yeah. This enigma that was once there is now disappeared into the abyss. Yeah. Um, and we get a lot of calls from members of the public phoning in and saying, do you know this company? Do you, do you know this person? Do, we were just we were speaking to this guy yesterday and we've paid them money and, and we are just like, it's, it happens daily. So again, I'm so happy that we're doing this because as many people that can watch this, the better because uh, it's life. I know. And I think talking about vulnerability, I think that is actually a key thing. So sometimes you feel so vulnerable, but you feel so taken for a ride. I've met people who've got like three degrees behind their name and you feel like a fool for being scammed. And I don't think you should feel that way. I think that these scamsters are smart. They've been doing this for a while. They're there to scam those people. We are so desperate and we so badly want to hear what we want to hear that we go with it. You're entering the space where you're learning about immigration. You're looking for a company to help you. It's not mm. like applying for insurance where we've done this before. Let me know yes. the companies and, you know, or getting a cell phone contract. It's very well known the process and you kind of, you know, you, you know, you're familiar with what checks and balances to do. This yes. space is completely new for people. There's terminologies, there's processes, there's protocols, there's registrations, there's this. So you don't want, yeah. as you said, you don't want to come across as looking like a fool. So you go, you just buy into this yes. and you get swept up in all the techniques that they use. What do I do to basically cover myself to do those checks and balances? Because they are physical things that you can do. You know, make sure that the company is registered. We spoke about that a little bit earlier. Okay. Make sure that there's a consultant that works for that company that's registered with the RCIC. Make sure they go to a website. Make sure you can go to a website where the number that, that the person called from exists on the website. I would put down the phone with that individual and yeah. say, before I pay you, I'm going to call you back. Phone the number back. If, it, if a receptionist picks up, that's great news. It's not just this guy in a garage, you know, trying yeah. to siphon money out of you. <laughs> Hi, this is X and X uh, immigration firm. How can I help? Hi, I'd like to speak to John. I just spoke to him 10 minutes ago. No problem. I'll put you through. That's a great sign. There's, a, there's, yeah. there's substance yeah. to this organization. Sometimes the scamsters can be quite... Um, organized and they might have that in place for example our website we've got a nice section on the site where you can go and you can see pictures of the people that you're speaking to and like short bios and you can understand exactly who they are if it's in a town or a city where you are based it's always a good idea to go and visit the offices you know see yeah. that the offices yeah. exist make True. sure that there's a logo on the wall make sure that there's people there make sure that there's a physical institution that exists um, that backs up what this person's saying over the phone. If they are talking about being a company, then they would naturally have a call center and a case management team and management and yes. you know, a secretary and the logo on the wall and, and all of that chat. Another cool thing that we do is because we know that clients are sussing us out. You know, they want to yes. know yes. that when they speak to us, that, that we're legit. So we offer tours we do virtual tours around the office if you want to see Perfect. our office space we jump on a zoom i take my laptop around and we show everyone where we work we show them the case management people guys wave you know yeah you can see That's that this brilliant. place exists yeah another thing make sure that you've got a clear and defined set of terms and conditions that they've provided you so you want to know if something does go wrong basically an agreement between you and the agency stipulating how the agency is um, acting and what your responsibilities are. And ultimately through that arrangement, the objective is often reached and that's an, an approved visa. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a problem, for example, like maybe you've been misqualified, you want to know that you're covered in those terms yeah. so that you can, if needs be, 
apply for a refund or a rebate um, or go down a different path. Something that I always do if I'm buying a product or I'm doing anything, I always check reviews. Um, if I'm buying a heater, it doesn't matter what it is, I want to see the reviews. And there are always going to be some negatives in there for sure. We're human, we all make mistakes and stuff happens. But on the whole, I want to look at the average reviews to make a decision in terms of this company. What do you think about reviews? It's like the naked truth, you know, like you, ca you can't hide from a review. Um, we, we encourage our clients to actually go and look at our uh, reviews on the various sites, Yelp, uh, Hello Peter, uh, oh, right. Google Plus, Facebook. And that is a place that you must actually go first. That's the place where you go mm. type in the company name, the agency name, see if they've been operating long enough that they've got a collection of reviews. And if you do see a negative re review on a company, don't freak out. Look at how the company responds. Go and see the other reviews. You want to yeah. kind of get a feel. Yeah. I mean, you might get a, a person phoning in and saying, oh, but I saw this bad review on your review site. And you say, well, okay, well, what phone do you use? And they might go, oh, well, I've got an Apple I've got an, or an iPhone. Um, go type in iPhone reviews. And you would see a, a multitude of different types of reviews, positive, negative. It's a great place to get a feel for how long the company's been going for, mm. how many visas they've, been, they've processed. Yes. And ultimately, yes. how many five-star reviews that they've got. But what I would say is don't freak out if you do see one or two negative ones. Sure. We, we are human just like anyone else. And ultimately, yes. as we were talking about earlier, Andrea, it's, a, it's a case of you can't be 100% all the time, but you can strive towards being that, that sort of level of perfection. Definitely go to the review sites, check them out, um, and go to many of them. You know, Don't just yeah. go to one. Yeah. Go yeah. to the four or five that are available. I really appreciate this input. I think, and I hope it's going to help a lot of people. Um, I think they're great practical tips and easy. Everybody can do this. And it's the biggest life decision you'll ever make. And I've met some of your staff members and they're like amazing Jamal and all of them. Um, and your staff are really invested in the people that they meet. They even cry and get super emotional. I'm like that because I have these Facebook followers and YouTube followers. And when they eventually come over and we have a coffee, I get so emotional because the process, I've, it's like my, they're my babies. I've been talking to these guys and girls for so long and they come here and it's like so exciting. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Every immigration case has its different challenges and different uh, sure. uh, how they play out. Uh, we had one it was a difficult case. It was a tough one. One of our staff members, Carolyn, she's just overly invested in the well-being of her clients. She'll be very bubbly and you'll go like, what's happening? Like, what's happening in your life that she's so happy? No, it's got this visa approved. It's got this case approved. Oh, um, and then you might see her at a desk like really down and you're like, so what's going on? Is everything okay? No, like we, you know, this, we're trying to get this approval. I just see this woman running across the office, breaking through the sliding door. We've got <laughs> really proud it's so nice working with people that are so invested in the in the client's interest um yeah. and that's what you must look for look yeah. for the yeah. sensitive ones the ones that are going to be there immigration is not straightforward you're gonna experience hurdles you're gonna experience problems with your application one document might be wrong it's how the the consultant deals with that and works with you together with you to achieve the desired outcome. And that's, I, that I believe is the most important thing. Fantastic. Listen, Robbie, it's been so great to hang with you and to get the lowdown on these fake immigration companies. They're always going to be around. It's super sad, right? That you have to do something that's the most important thing in your life and you have to wade through all of this rubbish to find what you're looking for. So guys, please, if you're watching, you know, really do your homework. If there are any other issues, contact me directly and maybe I can put you in touch with immigration agencies that are legitimate, that are registered with the right companies. Go and check out canada.ca um, and type in the consultant's name or the company's name, like Robbie said. You can't go wrong. It's been great spending time with you, Robbie. The pleasure. And we will chat again soon for sure. So it's been great spending time with Robbie today, chatting to him from NWI, New World Immigration. If you want to get hold of Robbie and you just want to chat to him about the things that you're going through or maybe if you're starting your immigration process, please look in the description for all of their details so you can get hold of him there. So if you like what you saw today and you 
thought it was useful and helpful, please like, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get updates as they upload.